you with your talent, with your background, with your your resume, there's a lot of things you could have done really well. You obviously have the drive and the passion that whatever you put your mind to was going to be successful. What was it that got you to say, hey, it's going to be chocolate? Hmm. The uh, well, I told you it was a pretty circuitous path, but the 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 thing for me is after I bought the Mercedes and sold it and started um, kind of having a, almost an awakening of self awareness that I hope that leaders will experience before uh, they hit the wall, um, or maybe they need to hit the wall, and that might wake them up to a place of self awareness, like wow, I just hit a wall. What's happening here? Um, and because I think that this, this is really the sort of uh, preamble to any kind of creativity, and it's a genesis point for all sorts of things, starting companies, changing careers, staying in careers. But for me, what happened is um, I, I decided that I needed to have a conversation with the brokenheartedness in my own life. And I think that this is true for everyone, not just business leaders, but we all at some point need to speak to our own broken heart. And mine was my dad's death when I was 14. He died of lung cancer. He was a lawyer, you know, a former Marine, physically fit. And I was with him when he died. And it was just terrible, you know, and the, the church people would come over and pray and speak in tongues. And it kind of freaked me out as a 13 year old. And, and they would say, he's going to be healed and, and uh, the claim his healing. And the leader of the group said, Sean, don't ever talk with your dad about death because if you do, then it'll be a sign of doubt and Jesus won't heal him. Wow. And I believe that. And my dad would try to talk to me about it and I'd push him away and say, dad, don't say things like that. You're not going to yeah. live. And he died and fast forward, you know, 25 years later and, you know, I'm winning cases and making money and buying Mercedes and, and uh, hmm. just wasn't working for me. So I thought, you know, I need to talk to that broken heart because it's still there. It doesn't matter how many years go by. You and I can have a conversation offline and I could probably talk to you for five minutes and, and learn if you were willing to share your own broken heart. Well, it's we, funny you say that. It, uh, and, I, it doesn't have to be offline. I had a very similar experience. My mom had cancer when I was a boy. And okay. we were at a church where they said very similar things that, you know, we're going to speak life and it's she's going to be healed. And if she's not healed, it, it implied a, a lack of faith. And well, then she ends up dying. And yeah. you can imagine the at a spiritual level, just the the shame and the guilt and, and that environment. And and the story has been redeemed many times over. And it, and it's it's amazing to look back in hindsight now and, and see how God's used all of that. But um, I think you're right. We all have these broken places and you and I, we lost our parents, but I, I think leaders listening, may, they may go, well, I didn't lose my parents. I'm not really broken. And mm -hmm. I would say we all have something broken somewhere that needs to be healed. And, and it may not yeah. have been as tragic as losing one of your Absolutely. parents, but um, when you say having a conversation with your brokenheartedness, uh, what does that look like? It looks like walking alone on a road and not having music or anyone, but just my own thoughts um, combined with a sort of walking prayer, if you will. Um, the contemplatives would say, resting in the presence of God. This is without agenda. It's just walking along and thinking. Um, with the backdrop um, and surrounded by this notion of union. Um, and it's a sacred conversation because of its intention. And um, so this is what it looked like for me, literally walking. I don't mean like metaphorically, I mean like walking down the road, mm -hmm. uh, you know, out in the, in the forest uh, where this uh, monastery is. And, and, uh, and, and just letting these things kind of flow over me. And to back up just one point, I would say, yes, I talk to people too, who say, well, I haven't experienced that kind of tragedy. Um, but when, when I um, hear people say, well, I, I really don't have a broken heart. Hey, if you're 30 or 40 or 50, and you tell me you don't have a broken heart, well, then I say, we need to talk about your life. Yeah. Let's get you a broken heart. Right. You know, and it's important um, because 
uh, we, 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 we grow from these experiences. And so in that conversation that, that, that we're talking about here in that conversation with my own grief, my own broken heart, this idea came to me to, to go to the hospital and volunteer on Fridays in the palliative care unit, which is hospice in the hospital. Essentially, everybody's dying mm-hmm. in this. In this, and I visited. Just I, I didn't. I, I was just a volunteer. You know, I'd go. Um, like I said on Fridays, I did it for almost five years. I'd knock on the door. Many of these patients didn't have anybody. They were in the oncology unit, uh, cardiology, or ICU, and um, you know, I would read to them out of the Bible or talk about whatever. And I always concluded by saying. Hey, um, one of the things I do as a volunteer is pray for people. Would you like me to say a prayer for you? Um, almost everybody who's dying will take a prayer. I learned this. <laughs> and, mm. um, and then here's the key. This is the key is I would say, okay, well, um, what would you like me to pray for? I didn't presume for them without asking. And this would open up a whole discussion for them of what they wanted me to pray for. And uh, I would listen and I would repeat their words and prayer back to them. I'd ask if I could, you know, touch their shoulder or hold their hand while I repeated their words and prayer right back to them. And some would say, would you pray that I'm healed so I can walk out of here? I did that. Or would you pray that I die today because I'm in pain? I did that. Or pray for my family or pray that I live a couple of weeks for a wedding anniversary or whatever. I did that. And this is the sort of penultimate um, point, I think, here is that during those moments, which were measured in seconds, I actually thought about someone else besides me. Hmm. And what I did is I'd leave their room and go to the next person. And then when I would leave the hospital, I'd walk out to my car. And sometimes I would, what I would do is I'd, I'd go into the chapel before and I would pray about these names of people I was going to go see. And then I would do it at the end of the visit. And I would just say a little prayer for those people that I'd just been with. And so then when I would walk to my car, sometimes, not every time, only a few times, I'd walk out to my car and it's as if I was walking on air almost. My mm-hmm. feet weren't touching the ground. They were, but I, maybe they weren't. And um, so to your listeners who were thinking, well, that sounds morbid. You're just with people who are dying and you're, why what what's what's going on there well what's going on is joy Hmm. that's what happened and khalil gibran says that our greatest joy is our sorrow unmasked and that's what i that is the result of the conversation with my broken heart that expressed itself in just complete and utter joy because it was from a place of deep pain Mm. within my own broken heart, which was just as broken then as it was 25 years ago when I'm standing at my dad's bedside and he takes his last breath. Wow. Because our broken hearts are not uh, on calendar time, right? They're not. Mm. They aren't. And uh, yeah, it's our often said that are, emotions yeah. don't understand time. I mean, it's no, no, that feeling. Right. We have a trigger that causes us to have a feeling that's the same feeling we had 20 years ago. Yes. And yes. our emotions can't tell the difference between that it actually was 20 years ago and now we're safe. And it, it feels like it's right now. We're, we're re experiencing right. that same thing. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome because it gives us some glimpse of eternity, mm. I think. And, um, and the, the sort of massive, you know, um, experience that we can have with our emotions, both good and sometimes traumatic. And so anyway, it's from that experience, um, not while I was at the hospital or not, but just what it did is it, that, that experience provided clarity to me. It gave me space. You're a type A person. I am. And so often, um, at least for me, I, I was so bound up in researching the answer and finding the answer it was just litter and I was just so tight that I couldn't loosen up and create space for, you know, really crazy things to come into my head, like making chocolate from mm. scratch. And so that's what, that's how it happened. I'm and within curious three if, months of me. Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, during that phase, did you notice as you're doing the volunteering and, and feeling this joy, did your body start to shift? I mean, you, you go back to when you had the anxiety attack and you're bound up emotionally and spiritually and and then physically that's manifesting did you see 
a progress towards health where mind, body, and soul were starting to feel more more levity in the in the experience? Um, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say a little bit, a little bit. But I also at that time was experiencing some other health things that were kind of scary. And um, but it was a time of healing for me. So right about the time that I started this company, I did turn a corner um, in some physical healing. And um, but it, you know, gosh, sometimes these things, especially chronic type things, it, 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 it can feel like it's so long and there's no progress. And that can be a a real source of depression and anxiety. And it was for me, but I started to turn the corner about mm. that time too. 